The Washington Post revealing that Donald Trump and his documents apparently contained some very terrifying nuclear materials. Hillary Clinton is petrified about it. And so we're going to hear from her. She's on The View ranting and raving about this. She is trying to rewrite history with her emails. She created this new thread. She's saying, I don't want anything to do with this. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And understandably so because we have some of those clips from Comey who said that you did something very illegal, Hillary, but it wasn't quite illegal enough for us, and so we're not going to charge you with crimes. So Hillary is upset about it, but we have to understand what she's so upset about before we get into that clip. And of course, this is the story. It is an exclusive from the Washington Post. For some reason, they keep getting leaks out of the DOJ. It's very strange. You know, the DOJ, Merrick Garland comes out and he says in front of all of us, in front of America, that the DOJ speaks through its filings, and I'm not going to answer questions about the investigation, whatever. And then, of course, day after day, drip after drip, leak after leak, the Washington Post seems to have a direct pipeline into the DOJ. Published this late on September 6, 10.36 p.m. Oh, my goodness, it's an exclusive. Devlin and Carol over at the Washington Post are like, we got to publish this, baby. It can't wait till morning. Hit the presses. Material on foreign nations' nuclear capabilities seized at Trump's Mar-a-Lago. All right, material, what are these, like Wikipedia articles or what? Some seized documents were so closely held, only the president, a cabinet-level or near-cabinet-level official, could authorize others to know. Now, as we go through this, right, I want, I want to just communicate or just sort of uh, highlight, spotlight, exactly how generic some of these descriptions are. Let's take a look. These journalists, so-called, write, a document describing a foreign government's military defenses, including its nuclear capabilities, was found by FBI agents who searched former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence and private club last month. According to people familiar with the matter, underscoring concerns about the classified material. All right, so it is a document, and again, I don't know what type of document that is, but a document describing this, is it the confidential top secret document or is that document separate and apart from the rest of the description? Some of the seized documents, are we talking about separate documents than the nuclear documents or is this the same batch of documents? You understand, is this the, is this next paragraph a subset of the nuclear materials or is this a different category that we're talking about? Don't know. Some of the seized documents detail top secret U.S. operations so closely guarded that many senior national security officials are kept in the dark about them. Wow. Only the president, some members of his cabinet and others and other officials are authorized to know the details of the special access program, according to people familiar with the search who spoke on condition of anonymity. Right. Because there are either liars or leakers, uh, both of which are not really great to describe sensitive details of an ongoing investigation. Yeah. Documents about such highly classified operations require special clearances on a need to know basis, not just top secret clearance. Some special access programs. Now, again, right. So I don't know what they're talking about. Like this is general documents. OK, so like general documents about such highly classified operations. What are they? Are they it feels very general to me, like you're just reading a Wikipedia article. How do they handle classified documents? Well, they categorize them into these different things. And some documents are so highly classified that they require need to know basis class uh, authorization. What were those it, what we're talking about here? Or is that like general? Because they also say some special access program can have as few as a couple dozen government rec personnel who are kept under lock and key, all designated with a designated control officer. And they say all of that was there. But such documents were stored at Mar-a-Lago with uncertain security more than 18 months after Trump left the White House. So such documents. Seize documents. Again, I don't, I don't really know what level of classification they're talking about or what specific documents. We've changed categories a couple times. After months of trying, according to government filings, the government discovered more than 300 classified documents. Right. So is that separate than the nuclear codes? Or again, this is just a description of the prior classification standards, right? So it, my, I guess my point is there's nothing new here. It was in this last batch of government secrets, people familiar with the matter said, that information about a foreign government's nuclear defense readiness was found. 
the people did not identify the foreign government in question, say where at Mar-a-Lago the document was found, or offer any additional details about one of the Justice Department's most sensitive investigations. So I guess it's just nuclear defense readiness. So is this like a memo that says that the North Koreans are trying to develop nuclear weapons? Because I'm pretty sure that is on actually Wikipedia. Yeah, it's like, yeah, he's going over there. Hey, Trump, don't forget, they want nukes. All right, I've got that written here. So it's a conversation about Trump's nuclear, uh, North Korea's defense capabilities. Okay, I can see that. All right. So is that, I mean, or is it something way more serious than that? Like, is this, is this the alternative? Does he have an entire encyclopedia of, you know, Iranian missile silos that Israel's targeting soon? And that could cause a big problem if that is leaked out or something. What's there? Christopher Keyes, a lawyer for Trump, decried leaks about the case. He said, you know, these things continue from this leaky DOJ, this political entity that is basically existing for the sole purpose of trying to obliterate Trump. Christopher says, <clears throat> you know, these leaks continue with no respect for the process nor any regard for the real truth. This does not serve well the interests of justice. He says, moreover, the damage to public confidence and the integrity of the system simply cannot be underestimated. The responsible course of action here would be for someone, anyone in the government to exercise leadership and control. <laughs> not going to happen there, Chris. Don't hold your breath, brother. The court has provided a sensible path forward, which does not include the selective leak of unverifiable and misleading information. There is no reason to deviate from the path if the goal is, as it should be, to find a rational solution to document storage issues which have needlessly spiraled out of control. Spokespeople for the Justice Department and the FBI declined to comment. Yeah, they'd rather just leak it over to the DOJ. I'm sorry, over to the Washington Post. Well, that's weird. Yeah, the spokespeople don't want to comment, but the leakers will send a whole story over there. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence, they are conducting their damage assessment, the same type of damage assessment they never did for Hillary. The Washington Post previously reported that agents were looking around for classified documents relating to nuclear weapons. After that story published, Trump said it's a hoax and the whole thing's a hoax. So they give you more backstory here, right? This is their exclusive story. And it's very little in terms of new information, but they're telling you, right, they're wrapping this around. They want that nuclear material headline in there with very little actual meat on the bones. Washington Post continuing to try to capitalize on this hyperbolic narrative that Donald Trump was on the verge of wrecking humanity. And if that's true, if there really were dangerous nuclear information, materials, codes, readiness, manuals, if there was anything that was so concerning that it warranted, I don't know, the rating of a political operative, uh, somebody who is an opponent in this country, would you think the White House would be very concerned about this? It, they'd say, hey, uh, UK, or they'd say, hey, Israel, or they'd say, hey, allied country, we have a very a serious national security concern here, all right? Your defense readiness was at a resort in Mar-a-Lago, all right? Trump was like reading your nuclear defense manuals, you know, while he was out in the golf course or something. Uh, or alternatively, you know, our enemies now know that we know what they know. And aren't we concerned about that? Are we escalating? Are we on DEFCON 5? Are we on code red 9-11 emergency? Kareem, nuclear is what is here. Please tell us, Kareem, what's the White House doing about all of this? <laughs> that files seized at Mar-a-Lago include material on foreign nations' nuclear capabilities. I know you can't speak specific to that investigation, nor to the findings there. I, I know where the line is drawn at this White House yeah. as it relates to that. But what has this president specifically said, and has he held any calls with some of America's allies or even adversaries on the issue of nuclear secrets the U.S. may have some access to to try to placate their concerns that that information is not in safe hands 
in the United States. So I can say this, we don't have uh, any calls to foreign governments to read out at this time. Uh, oh, so I guess not that big of a deal, all this defense posturing or forward assault capability or nuclear materials or not that catastrophic if you guys don't even have any concerns about it, it sounds like. On this particular issue, as you know, I, and I'll reiterate this, you already kind of alluded, uh, you know, when it comes to this specific issue, as, as I've said many times, the ODNI is in the middle of an assessment and DOJ is in the middle of an ongoing criminal investigation. So I'm not going to comment. But again, I don't have any calls to to read out. To Let me you. ask separate from that, then obviously this is not unique to this investigation. There's been discussion that classified information was mishandled by the last administration, even before this investigation that we've been reporting on. So at, at any point, has the president had conversations with other nations to communicate to them that that information, they should view that information as secure. What has he done to try to make that message clear to those allies or adversaries around the world? Again, I don't have, we don't have any calls has, to- Has he in the past? We don't have any calls uh, to uh, any foreign government to read out to you at this time. From any time over the course of we 18 don't months? Have, we don't have any calls to okay. read out at this time. Thank you. Okay. No calls to read out at this time. We're not concerned about it. The masked journalist is obviously very concerned about it. And he's saying, look, the Washington Post just said there should be a meltdown any minute now. It's imminent. Kareen, what are you doing in your administration about this? Well, we don't have any calls planned. We haven't communicated anything to our allies. Uh, and we really haven't thought all that much about it. But of course, you know, he's obviously very concerned. That gentleman has a lot of risk aversion, apparently. Now, somebody says, Crispy Leg says, why is he wearing a mask? And was he the only one reporter wearing one? So I didn't see the rest of the press room, but I think he probably was. And I don't know, you know, people still wearing masks, they can fall into one of two categories. They can fall, well, they can fall into many categories, but you know, sometimes people might have an elderly mother at home or somebody who just suffered through something. And so they're being hyper vigilant and you know, you can give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. Or if it's a journalist, a media reporter, they're probably just hysterical hyperventilators, hyperbolic lunatics. And that's probably the latter category where he fits into. But this, of course, is Corrine Jean-Pierre. They're melting down in the media about this, but is the actual institution doing anything about this? Are they responding in any way to avert nuclear catastrophe? Or is it just not that big of a deal at all? Probably the latter. Now, there are some pretty big issues with the DOJ continuing to leak. The DOJ is supposed to be an entity that abides by justice, right? And they focus on equal protection of the law. And they don't do things that make one party highly disadvantaged by leaking, let's say, evidence to the public. If you or somebody you know or love is charged with a crime and your evidence and your presumption of innocence is being smeared all over the media because your leaky Department of Justice wants it to because they're partisan political hacks. Isn't that problematic? Well, here is CNN that is now blaming Trump for the DOJ's leak. Anderson Cooper says, maybe Donald Trump shouldn't have had those documents there in the first place. If he wouldn't have had them, then the FBI couldn't have seized them, and then the FBI wouldn't have been responsible for the leaks. Now, here is Cooper. There's this one gentleman here uh, in the tie, and I think he's making the point. Well, let's listen to him tell us. Anderson, I was going to point out, like, you know, what Jennifer referred to earlier, what I don't like about this either is the fact that Devlin is getting this information over the transom, right? This, the basic, this, this information is probably classified in and of itself, Right, these types of documents, the contents of the documents, those are classified in and of themselves. And somebody is improperly, somebody probably the Department of Justice has improperly thrown this over the transom to Devlin. And that's that's it just as improper as well and should be condemned. Saying that the DOJ leaking this stuff to Devlin, Devlin's the journalist over at the Washington Post, is problematic. It's supposed to be a tight investigation with no leaks but they are leaking things right over to the DO, from the DOJ over to the media and watch these people defend the leaks now. Um, I also want to bring in- and, 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 it's pro and it's probably illegal. Sorry, Judge, go ahead. Well, just as improper, I think, I mean, improper, sure, a leak is improper, but the notion that you want to put the leak in the same category well, as boxes and boxes- Well, it's illegal, Your Honor, it's illegal. You, you wouldn't be condoning illegal yeah. behavior. Right. <laughs> She's a judge. This guy says, uh, judge, you wouldn't be condoning illegal behavior, would you, judge? She says, well, no, 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 no. But it's not nearly as bad 
as Donald Trump's boxes and boxes of material. Yeah, it might be illegal, but it's kind of like not all that illegal, not as illegal as Trump, she says. Now, listen to Anderson come in here and try to clean this up. This, this is the reason we don't have secret documents in a beach resort, because they get out and people can do things. This is why we don't have documents at a beach resort. OK, it's that emotive conjugation. The beach resort was where Donald Trump spent a ton of time when he was the president. So it was good enough for a sitting president. Now it's suddenly a beach resort. But he says this is why documents aren't stored there, because what happens? Uh, I guess if you store documents illegally, then the FBI comes and raids you and then they disclose them. They leak them. Right. The FBI. The documents didn't get leaked to the Washington Post or this information didn't get leaked to the Washington Post because of Donald Trump. Everything was perfectly fine sitting right there. The Washington Post reporters, Devlin, got this information because the DOJ and the FBI raided his home and then they leaked it. Not Trump. But you've got Cooper saying, well, I mean, if Trump wouldn't have taken the documents in the first place, then... Maybe the FBI wouldn't have taken them and then broken the law by leaking this information to the Washington Post. So CNN blaming Trump for even the FBI and the DOJ's incompetence and illegalities now, which is a new one. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Maybe they should charge him with crimes for that. Maybe they should impeach him a third time, idiots. All right, so now we've got Marco Rubio, who is running for re-election out in Florida. Rubio is on with Fox and Friends, and he says, you know, these leaks of Trump's evidence to the Washington Post are critically problematic. Here's what he said. You know, when we first, if true, this Washington Post look at, that doesn't seem like the kind of thing you should have uh, in your post-presidential desk drawer. Well, let's break this down. First of all, uh, again, we, we really don't know because uh, let's go back and understand that all of this information is coming from one side and one place, and that is sources with knowledge of the investigation. Well, who are the sources with knowledge of the investigation? The FBI and the Justice Department, and they are leaking to the media. Like so a generally, in, when there's an investigation by the FBI or the Justice Department, they're not even acknowledging there is an investigation, much less leaking. These people every single day are strategically leaking information that can't be rebutted, by the way, or in any way analyzed for a reason. And Trump can't even see it, right? He can't even see this material. Remember, the only things that he has seen thus far, and we're going to get to this when we get to Christina Bob, are the inventory lists. They had the very, very generic inventory list that basically had nothing in there, just box A21. And then we got the more detailed list that said box A21 has 1,000 documents that are not problematic, that are non-government, non-classified materials, and then one classified document. And they said, oh, that means we get that box. We get the box to the left, the box to the right, top, bottom, below. We get the whole stinking room. They were taking desk drawers out and capturing his passports and other materials. And so Trump now right? They're leaking these materials selectively and Trump can't even respond to it because he doesn't even know what's in it. And that's politics to influence the narrative. And so I'm, first of all, very skeptical of that. I also, the whole thing about only cabinet officials could know that that's not the way classification works. Classification is based on both the compartment, the way it's classified at what level, and then the need to know basis. The third thing I would say is that, um, you know, as a member of the gang of eight, which is the eight officials in Congress with insight yep. to intelligence. We're read into all kinds of things uh, all the time. Never once were we ever approached and told there is this massive uh, brewing counterintelligence threat to the United States and we want to make you aware of it. And finally, if you read the pleadings and the documents filed by the government themselves, and, and granted, they are heavily redacted, so not even have we seen what's in the redaction. But what you see in there is very early on, the government sent a letter to Trump's lawyer basically saying, we think you are in possession of X number of boxes. It didn't say immediately return those to us. It said, please store them somewhere where they're safe behind lock and key and the like. So if it was really that sort of an urgent problem, why didn't they immediately demand their return? Why didn't they come to the gang of eight or the intelligence committee heads and say, look, we've got this major problem on our hands. Instead, what we get is these constant leaks. And the only reason to leak to the media is to influence the narrative, which tells you this is being politicized, which is which is exactly why they didn't come to the Intelligence Committee, exactly why they didn't go to the Gang of Eight. They don't want to talk to Congress. They don't want permission for any of this stuff. They want Trump's 
property raided. They want an investigation into overdue library books because that's how they're going to win the narrative in their minds. We'll see if it works out. Hillary Clinton, of course, is out trying to make herself relevant. She came out with some new documentary series or some sort of uh, book tour. She's you know, running around with, uh, what's her daughter's name? Christina or something like that. And they're running around. And so here you can see Hillary Clinton is trying to rewrite history. Very interesting. You know, she's having to weigh in on this Trump saga. We all know that Hillary Clinton had a little bit of a problem with some of those confidential documents back during her tenure when she was Secretary of State. And so she's now going to be weighing in. And she, she posted this on September 6, 2022. Hillary says, I can't believe we're still talking about this in a Twitter post that she's creating. You know, it's like, if you don't want to talk about it, why are you talking about it? It's kind of weird. I can't believe we're still talking about this, but my emails, dot, dot, dot. Because that's just like that was like a meme. Remember when she was running? My emails, but my emails. Remember all that? And they thought it was really funny, you know. <laughs> Didn't work out well for him. She says, but my emails. As Trump's problem continues to mount, she says, the right is trying to make this about me again. There's even a, quote, Clinton standard. The fact is that I had zero emails that were classified. Say, oh gosh, Hillary. All right. Well, let's just take a look at this. There were these two clips that came out from Mr. James Comey. We all remember him. And James Comey said the opposite of this. Now, Hillary said, the fact is I had zero emails that were classified. And what Hillary does, if you read the rest of her thread, she goes on and sort of eventually says, I don't want to talk about this anymore. And she refers you over to some website called the National Memo. And the National Memo, they go through this story, this saga, and they say that everything that James Comey said is irrelevant because classification issues, right? Hillary's classifying it at, at, in time. Some documents are classified at the moment of creation. Some documents are up classified, meaning they're not classified and then they are classified. Some documents are classified and then declassified. Right. Just like something can be declassified, it can be up classified. And so there's all sorts of complexities around this. But if you read Hillary's justification, she says, oh, no, 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 no. What James Comey said is not accurate because uh, uh, Trump and everybody else says they're classified differently than Comey did. And she says that my analysis is better than James Comey's. But do you remember what Comey said? We had two very interesting clips here. And the first one is from Comey when he was talking about all Hillary's email saga. And he was in particular telling us about some of the findings that the FBI found 49 seconds, quick refresher of our recollections. From the group of 30,000 emails 30, returned 000. to the State Department in 2014, 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information oh. at the time they were sent or received. At the time they were sent or received. Got it. Eight of those chains contained information that was top secret oh. at the time they were sent. 36 oh. of those chains contained secret information wow. at the time. Wow. And eight contained confidential information at the time. Wow. That's the lowest level of classification. Wow. So top to work. Separate from those, about 2,000 additional emails were up classified to make them confidential. Mm. Those emails had not been classified at the time that they were sent or received. Oh, okay. So you can see the difference there. Some were not classified at the time that they were sent. Others were up classified. And so Comey gave us that speech, right? He gave us that little, uh, that little, you know, book report from his, uh, his, his agency. They go, go, uh, take all the emails and put them into a spreadsheet and uh, label them in columns. And then they said, here you go, Mr. FBI director, here's our report. And he comes out and he says that, uh, but you know, it's interesting. Hmm. Did they raid Hillary's home to go pick up that server that was at clintonemail.com? Did they go into her closet and pull it out of there? Did they do any of those things to go get those? No. In fact, they didn't. In fact, she deleted a lot more than that as well. And what did the FBI do when they were investigating those crimes or alleged crimes? Not much. In fact, here is the clip of James Comey flubbing, fibbing around the actual law, changing grossly negligent into a new phrase, extremely careless. Here is Comey 
former FBI director. Although we did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information. They didn't intend to violate the law. They set up an entire separate server. Who is hooking the computer up, registering the domain name? Who is installing all of the software to connect these things? Somebody had the intention of setting them up. There is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. For example, seven email chains concern matters that were classified at the top secret special access program at the time they were sent and received. Those chains involve Secretary Clinton both sending emails about those matters and receiving emails about those same matters. Wow. There is evidence to support a conclusion that any reasonable person in Secretary Clinton's position or in the position of those with whom she was corresponding about those matters should have known that an unclassified system was no place for that conversation. Should have known, didn't know, didn't do it. No raiding of her home, no investigation that was the DOJ rummaging around Bill Clinton's closet, trying on his brassiers. Didn't see that happen. But of course it did happen in Trump's situation. And so now, of course, here is Hillary Clinton on The View after all of that saga. Hillary Clinton's going to say how terrified she is about this current situation in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> I mean, I, I think this should be taken really seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And not, it's not a joking matter. And it, it shouldn't be partisan. No. And it shouldn't be partisan. No. It, it should concern every American because... Why? Those documents in the empty folders, as uh -huh. they were marked, um, suggest Invisible. that there was really important secret information that is uh, essential to our country's defense and security. Oh. And when the report came out yesterday that the documents also included information about, we don't know which, an ally or an adversary's mm -hmm. nuclear program. I cannot tell you how terrifying that is. Yeah, and yeah. Alyssa, you know, because you were at the Defense yeah. Department. Terrified, terrified that there are empty documents over there at Mar-a-Lago, and she just can't wrap her head around, uh, you know, the consequences of this. Meanwhile, she had an entirely separate email server with tens of thousands of documents that were kept off of the official government books. And we just heard from James Comey explaining to us that many of them were extremely Top secret and national security, this, that, or the other. But that wasn't so terrifying. In fact, she says she's sort of tired of talking about it. Don't you love it? Now, we also have Bill Barr. Plain Hooky says, do not bring Clinton back for the love of... Bill Barr is also hitting the airwaves saying that Donald Trump indictment is probably pretty likely. We heard from him previously saying that the appointment of a special master was not a wise decision, saying that he thinks it should be appealed and that it will be appealed and that it's kind of a stalling tactic. But here's Bill Barr now answering the ultimate question. Fox News reporter saying, sir, do you think that Donald Trump is going to be indicted? Let's listen to Mr. Barr. You don't know if a rule is there. I hope it's make appealed. It. I hope you, it's you believe it? Yeah. Do you have a view on how it ends? Yeah, I think, you know, as I've said all along, there are two questions. Will the government be able to make out a technical case? Will they have evidence by which that, w that they could indict somebody on, including him? And I, that's the first question. And I think they're getting very close to that point, frankly. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, there's another question is, do you indict a former president? What will that do to the country? What kind of precedent will that set? Good will the points. people really understand that this is not, you know, failing to return a library book? That yes, it is, Bill. Yes, it is. This was serious. And so you have to worry about those things. And I hope that those kinds of factors will incline the administration not to indict him because I don't want to see him indicted mm -hmm. as a former president. Likely to be indicted, but does not want to see him indicted because he doesn't want to see what that puts this country through. And I think he's right about that. I think that they can indict him. I think they probably will indict him, but they should not indict him. It is going to cause a big, big problem. Let's see how Barr wraps this up. Uh, but I also think they'll be under a lot of pressure to indict him because, you know, one question is, look, if anyone else would have gotten indicted, why not indict him? Uh 
Well, that's the point there, Bill. A lot of people didn't get indicted. Hillary Clinton didn't get indicted. Many others have not gotten indicted because we know what it looks like when one political party goes after another political opponent for purely partisan reasons doesn't look good. We also have Christina Bob. Christina Bob is Trump's defense lawyer, and she's talking a little bit more about these property lists. These property lists are informational to the defense team. They want to know what evidence they've got against them. And as the Washington Post and others continue to leak about the materials that are apparently within the government's purview, then there is more questions about what they've seized so that the defense can actually create a defense. Here is Christina Bob, Trump's defense lawyer, now communicating about those property lists and the difficulty surrounding representing a defense client when you don't even know what the evidence is. I don't know that anything about this raid was legal, but uh, they did take attorney-client documents, and we know that because in the warn in the receipt of property that they gave us, they actually gave us two separate receipts of property. One of them is a shorter list; I think it only has about five or six items on it, and then you've got the other one that has the, I don't know, twenty or so items on it. And uh, the, the shorter list, which doesn't explain that it's privileged information, they just happened to tell me that when they gave me the receipt. Uh, they said this is privileged information that, you know, we're handling it differently. You know, we'll work out with the lawyers how to handle it. But of course, you know, they write out classified information on the one list. And then when they take something that uh, is questionable and the public won't like, they leave that off of the list and just tell me. So. Uh, I think it's a lot of gamesmanship. I think what they did is wrong. It's illegal. It's unconstitutional. And I think they have a lot of explaining to do. They do. And that's a very interesting thing. She's saying that that the information, the property list that they're giving her are necessarily vague, but they're giving her more information than is on the property list. So, So in other words, they are okay talking and communicating with her about what is actually has been seized, what is a part of the evidence, but they're not going to put it on the property and inventory list because they don't want the public to see. They don't want the rest of the world to see what this is really all about. And to me, what that means is this is technical. This is administrative. This is not something that is juicy. They want to put out juicy tidbits like nuclear materials or nuclear capabilities when it's probably a Wikipedia article or a pamphlet about say this when you're meeting with Kim Jong-un. Remember this. Not nuclear codes, but they'll communicate that to Christina Bob, but they won't communicate that to us. They'll leak the bad news or the scary words because they know that the media will do the rest of it. And they'll just ask people to fill in the blanks and the public will fill in the blanks with scarier things than reality, which is why they're doing it this way. Meanwhile, we all have to ask ourselves, where are the Republicans on the Trump defense? Are they concerned at all with the weaponization of the DOJ? Does the Republican leader in the House, does the Republican leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, care at all about the DOJ being weaponized to go after political opponents in America? We've checked in multiple times with Mitch. He hasn't had a lot to say. This is time number three. Here's Mitch McConnell. Do you think it's appropriate the way that the former president was storing those top secret and classified documents at his private estate at Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, I, I don't really have any comments on this this whole in, investigation that's been dominating the news for the last month. I think we're following it like all of you are. Those are classified documents, Mr. Leader. I mean, that's important. And he leaves. I have nothing to say about this. I Listen, sir, you know, uh, journalist, cut me some slack here, okay? I'm only the Republican Senate leader, all right? So I'm just following this like the rest of you. I really don't know much about anything here. So uh, thanks for your question. And then we've got, uh, he just makes a a beeline. Look, kind of does, he's kind of reminding me of Joe Biden a lot here lately. Kind of mumbles something out and just runs for the door. You are. (laughs) These are classified documents, Mr. Leader. I mean, that's important. These are about nuclear documents. Do you have any comment on that? right out the door. So not even concerned at all. Just like, well, I guess we're just going to sit around here and just uh, let the investigation unfold as it may. And that's Mitch McConnell, cocaine Mitch, the turtle, not doing much useful recently. And, you know, the Republicans take a look around at the polls and they start wondering why maybe they're not getting the momentum that they should be. And it's probably because of a really kind of, kind of, uh, milk toast individuals like old McConnell. And so we'll continue to cover the Trump saga, of course. Thank you for subscribing and liking this video wherever it is you're watching it. 